Hi, and welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be concentrating on finding area between curves. In order to find the area between curves, we need to know where the intersection points of the curves are. If we just have two curves, it may intersect at one point, two points, or more. We need to know what each one of those intervals are so that we can set up our integration correctly. We're going to get a graph of both functions. That way we can get um, know whether our solutions are reasonable or our setup for the integration is reasonable. We will need to decide which function is above the other one or maybe we need to know which one is to the right. So we're going to have to evaluate that before we set up our integrals. Then we're going to integrate each one separately and then once we find the areas of each one of the intervals we're just going to add those areas together. Let's look at this specific example. We have the function x cubed minus 4x squared plus 1. That's obviously the curve here, the cubic one. The other one is the x minus 3, which is the linear function. We want to find the area between the curves. Well, if I always let f of x be the first function that I put into my integration, and then I subtracted this area underneath x minus 3, I would get positive here, but then I would get a negative for this area because the f of x function is below the g of x function here. So we do have to separate this into two separate integrals. Otherwise, this positive area added to this negative area, where this area and then the pink is greater, is going to give us a negative area. And we're also canceling out all this area over here. So what we're going to do is find out where these three intersection points are. We're going to integrate from this first intersection point to this one, get this area. Then we're going to take this intersection point here and this last intersection point here and integrate this area, but we're going to flip it because we're going to let g of x be on top or first and then subtract the f of x for the second region. Okay, so let's go ahead and find our intersection points. We can do that pretty easily by setting the two functions equal to each other and then isolating x. So we're going to bring our x minus 3 over to the other side. And for this particular um, function, we can factor this out. So we're factoring x squared out of the first two terms, negative 1 out of the last two terms, and then we're going to regroup that. The x squared minus 1 can be factored one more time. So we have three intersection points, where x equals 1, negative 1, and positive 4. While we're here, let's go ahead and find our ordered pairs. So if we hadn't graphed it already, this would help us to graph our two functions. So we know that they both have points at negative 1, negative 4, 1, negative 2, and 4, 1. Okay, but the x values are going to be the endpoints of integration. So we're going to be integrating from negative 1 to 1, and then again from 1 to 4. So let's decide which function is above the other one. Again, we're just assuming that we haven't finished graphing this yet, so we're going to go ahead and plug in values. So if we plug in a number in between negative 1 and 1, we see that by plugging in 0, f of 0 is 1 and g of 0 is negative 3, so the f function is higher than the g function. Then I get, again plugged in another number, this one between the 1 and 4 for the second interval. I plugged in a 2, so the f function is negative 7 at 2 and the g function is negative 1 at 2. So in this case the g function is above the f function. So on the interval from negative 1 to 1, f of x is greater, and on the interval from 1 to 4, g of x is greater. So that's going to help us to set up our integrals. For the first interval, we're going to do the f of x minus the g of x function, the greater minus the less. And then we're going to integrate from negative 1 to 1. And for the second interval, we're going to do the g of x function minus the f of x function, and go from 1 to 4. Okay, so now we need to integrate. So we have in the interval from negative 1 to 1 and our f of x function minus our g of x function. Then we're just going to simplify that and do our integration. So we have x to the 4th over 4 minus 4x to the 3rd over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus 4x. 
and we're going to plug in our in points of integration of 1 and negative 1 and then simplify our fractions so we get 16 thirds. Now let's do our second interval. We're going to do our g of x function first minus our f of x function and then simplify that. So you should notice here that we got exactly the same thing but opposite signs. That's what's going to keep us from getting a negative on this interval. Then again integrate plug in our endpoints of integration, this time using 1 and 4, and simplifying our fraction. So we have 16 thirds for the first interval and 63 over 4 for the second. Then just add them together and we get around 21 units squared for our area. Okay, let's try another example. Here we have two parabolas and the equations are given in terms of y. Now we could integrate in terms of x and change all our equations in terms of x. But that would make it much more complicated because we would have two separate integrals, one for the left side and one for the right side, integrating just the functions because there's on the right side it's just this y squared function for the whole thing. And on the um, right side here, it's just the g function. Okay, so what we're going to do is integrate in terms of y. So we're going to first find our intersection points by setting the two equations each equal to each other and isolating y. So these two graphs are intersecting where y is 1 or y is negative 1. Then we're going to plug the negative 1 and 1 into our functions and get the two ordered pairs that they have in common at one negative one and one positive one. Now that we know what our intersection points are, we can do the integration. We also know that the f at y function is going to be on the left and the g of y is on the right. We know that just by graphing these as conics. So if you have y squared, that means that you have a vertex at 0, 0 and it opens to the right. If you have a negative in front of your y squared, it's going to open to the left. And we know if we have 3 minus 2y squared, we have an ordered pair at 3, 0. So graphing these is pretty easy to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our integration. With these, we're going to do right minus left. So we have our right function, which was the g of y function, minus the f of y function. And then simplify that. And then we're going to integrate, so we have 3y minus, um, well it was 3y to the third over 3, so the 3's canceled, leaving us with y to the third. And we're going to integrate from 1 to negative 1, plugging in our two values. <coughs> we end up with 4 units squared for this area. Okay, let's try one more. Here we have two functions, the secant squared and the cosine. The secant squared is 1 over the cosine squared. So you know that if you square that, those values, then we're always going to have positive numbers and the secant graph opens up. So the cosine graph opens down. So the area in between them can be determined by subtracting the secant squared minus the cosine squared. Now it said that um, we want to have the integrals from negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4. You were given that here because these two graphs only intersect at one point, at 0, 1. So we had to have endpoints of integration given to find some area there. Notice also that I just multiplied um, 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 4. Because the, both these graphs are symmetric with the y-axis, we can break it up that, um, that way, and it's a little bit easier to evaluate the integral. But you didn't need to do that. You could have integrated from negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 4 because both these areas above are above the x-axis. Okay, let's find the integral of the secant squared. That's the tangent. And the integral of the cosine is the sine. Then we're just going to plug in our two endpoints of integration and evaluate. So we get um, 2 times 1 or 2 and 2 times negative square root of 2 over 2 is negative square root of 2. So our, our value is 2 minus the square root of 2 exactly or around 0.586 units squared for our area. 
Okay, thank you for tuning in to Demystifying Math. I hope this helped you a little bit with the area between curves.